Hello, bright blessings, and welcome to the Magical Cottage. Today, I'm going to talk to you about creating a crystal grid using crystals, gems, and minerals to enhance your magical purposes. So there are books and websites that tell you all about these different energies. I won't go into it in detail today because that's a very uh, long extended study. Some people just specialize in gems and minerals uh, and crystal work. There's a lot of crystal healers out there. Okay, wonderful, wonderful earth energy that they're using. And so look into some of the wonderful books that are available and research on the internet uh, the different energies. But today I'm just going to show you how to use some of these wonderful stones to enhance your magical energy work. Uh, I think that today I'm going to create a grid that is sort of something that everybody seems to be interested in and that is uh, increasing financial prosperity. And so I decided to use as my centerpiece, which oftentimes you'll want to get some sort of a, a plate or something to build your grid on. Um, as if you're going to use a candle, then you might want to get something that is safe to put candles on. And uh, also remember to always practice your fire safety and don't leave candles unattended in a place where they could be dangerous, okay? Um, but I was going to use my little statue of Ganesha today to set him in the center. Ganesha is the elephant head god who removes obstacles, okay? So he is going to be removing obstacles to financial prosperity in this grid. If you prefer not to use um, a statue or an icon of this sort, you can just use a simple candle, and in this case, a green candle for financial prosperity and abundance would be great. I've chosen, however, to use Ganesha, so we're going to set him in the middle. And this will be the front of your grid. And green stones uh, are relevant to the heart chakra, but they can also be symbolic of growth and financial prosperity. Just think of the green leaves growing and the, um, the green vegetable leaves and how that all hints at abundance and growth. Okay, so we want to remove the obstacles that are going to come in the way of our financial growth. Here is a malachite stone. I'm going to set this one in front of him. Wonderful grounding stone. We want grounding in our home security. Okay, so I set that one there. A smaller one, emerald, is another one. Very good for healing. And we're going to be healing our financial situation here. Now, citrine is a money magnet stone. Okay, it looks like this. These have points at one end. One end is usually pointier than the other end. So I'm going to take the points on these and aim them outward because they're going outward into our environment. And I have four of these, so I'm going to put them in four different directions here. This point is on the white end. You can see that the citrine is an orange color and then white or clear on the other end. Okay, so they're aiming out into the four different directions. I have a couple more green stones that I can place perhaps here. What you're going to do is look for a balance and something that's pleasing to you because you're the one that's going to be looking at this grid all the time. And so it should be pleasing to you. Use your intuition, okay, to uh, place the stones in a way that makes sense to you. And remember, it's all about your intention. So use your intention. Here I have some copper. It's wonderful. It's the Taurus metal. Taurus is all about um, financial stability. Taurians are very much into money and security, real estate. They're into beauty too. But so these, the, the, the financial security is really important to a Taurus. So we're going to put those 
I'm going to put that in back of him because that's supporting him. It's got his back, okay? So you can see I've put my little copper ball and my little piece of copper back there, okay? So I'll place it there. <clears throat> then I have a couple of just plain quartz crystals, and I'm going to set them on either side of these green stones with the points going out because I want that energy to go out into my environment. Okay, so there you have it. Now, the next thing you'll want to do is to charge your crystal grid. And the simple way to do that is to make sure you're nice and grounded, you're not too tired. In fact, don't even start this grid if you're feeling tired or frazzled or upset. You don't want to bring any worry energy or any kind of doubtful energy to this grid. You want it to be all very positive energy. So ground and center yourself. Take a couple of deep breaths. And then hold your hands over your grid and charge it. And you may even feel the sensation of energy coming out of your hands. I'll leave them there for a few minutes. And picture in your mind what financial prosperity means to you. And know that you are deserving of all good things. Okay, and then that's all there is to it. I suggest that you put your grid in a place where you're going to see it at least once a day. Uh, if you're working in an office area and you want to set up a crystal grid, it's easy enough to do the, a very small one. Uh, without it being too conspicuous, if that's an issue where you work. But have fun with this, because I, I love crystals, and I love making crystal grids. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy doing this. And remember, it's all about the energy. And these crystals, gems, minerals, have a wonderful energy. So don't forget to use that earth energy by making crystal grids wearing crystal jewelry and creating amulets as well. If you'd like to know more about creating crystal grids and see some more examples, you can visit my blog post that I have on WordPress at www.themagicalcottage.com. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.